I had an email from Gary from NY who'd uh, shot me an email saying, I previously purchased some of your Kemper profiles. I wound up selling the Kemper in live use. It always sounds like a CD playing through my 1x12 guitar cab instead of a real amp. The band thought so too, except for the keyboard player. They've been playing digital instruments for many decades and have resigned to it. A little side swipe for the keys player there. Sorry, mate. Uh, I currently have a GT1000 Core, which I bought just to do chorus delay reverb duty with the tube rig. But when auditioning it for full live rig solution, it still sounds too digital, like skimmed milk compared to whole milk and not something that can be remedied with EQ in my experience. These devices all record well, but just don't sound right compared to analog stuff in live use. Currently using either a red plate tube amp or an ethos amp. Uh, and then he says, so I just watched your Satriani tone next video. Sounds great as all your videos do. My guess is you've probably played through all the different modeling products at this point, most of them. Do you feel any of them is clearly superior to the rest in sounding real played live through a standard guitar cab and is going into a tube amp critical to get in this? So I thought this was a really interesting question. Like of all of the modeling stuff that I've played, is there anything that stands out as being more real, uh, sounding better, all those sorts of things. So I thought let's do a video on that. This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Gary does hit on an interesting topic here where he says, you know, all of these things record really well. It's the live thing, which um, maybe is a little bit more tricky. And uh, Eric Klein also happened to, to chime in on this uh, a few weeks and months ago where he was talking about, actually, I don't think, or he didn't think, and I tend to agree with him. Uh, so yeah, he said, whatever sparkle and fidelity coming out of a tube amp's various output jacks can and has been measured exhaustively and recreated to the point where golden ear engineers cannot tell the difference in double blind listening tests. Whatever magic you're talking about comes from the cab slash speaker, not any sort of tube voodoo. So I think we can talk about which we think is maybe the more accurate and most accurate and all that sort of stuff. But I think really, generally, sort of the, the higher tier modelers, I think generally tend to sound definitely within the ballpark. And when you record next to like an amp on a load box, for example, I think it's really difficult to tell which is an amp and which is not. I don't know if you can tell from these two clips or these two comparators which you think is the real amp. Feel free to jump in the comments if you think you fancy telling the difference.
thing is that once we take these things live we tend to be doing things quite differently to if we used a real amp for example in the studio and that sort of thing actually matching with a Kemper Tonex or neural amp modeler neural DSP quad cortex I think can yield uh, really close results quickly but the downside with some of those stuff is it's kind of a less tweakable end result um, whereas I think for me what I was using in this video predominantly was the Fractal FM3 um, This is a dirty Shirley clone and there's a dirty Shirley model in the FM3 I know this has a 6v6 power amp section so I've just jumped into the menu changed to a 6v6 power amp section set the dials roughly similar and actually ended up with an end result which I think I preferred and definitely when I was playing the tube amp I was thinking this is amazing I start with that, I thought, well, how could Modeler be as inspiring as this? And then I jumped into the Fractal FM3, tried it, had kind of that same thought, actually, like, I don't want to stop playing this. So um, I think Fractal FM3, XFX FM9, for me, is the, they've shown their workings. Um, and so you can get in there, you can tweak all of the stuff that is within the real amps. And I think that, for me, is what gives me some reassurance that actually that might be the area where if you're really concerned about accuracy that you might want to go down that route because they kind of showed you the, the inner workings of this stuff like uh, cathode resistors and beaker impedance modeling and all this sort of stuff we can really get down the rabbit hole on um, but that's kind of to me what shows under the hood that they've thought through like all of the possibilities in a way that with the Kemper um, you don't really get that same reassurance because it's like, for instance, refining a profile like that process in it in and of itself seems kind of completely. Does anyone really know? Uh, kind of question mark stuff. And same with like a quad cortex creating a, a capture. It's like, well, it's machine learning. It's a neural network. All that sort of stuff. I don't know really what that means. How that really works, and you know retraining models and all that sort of stuff it just seems to me a little bit less whatever and for instance uh they actively will tell you things like tube screamers can't necessarily be profiled particularly accurately because it's got a couple of things going on or fuzz pedals for example because they've got like a time element where there's kind of like a sag now tube amps have that sort of stuff going on as well so i think for that reason like profiling and um capturing can be like a really good quick result um, but because you don't then have a model that is as tweakable or have some of these time elements that real tube amps potentially will have then I think for me personally I think I'll go down the route of like a model particularly because then like with a real amp live I'll generally be sort of tweaking things right if I think right well uh, in this room I like a bit more presence or a bit more top end or actually it's a bit too trebly here I'll make adjustments um, in the modeling world we kind of tend to lock in a little bit more than that right where you're just like on in the middle of the gig I'm more likely to be going in and kind of changing snapshots and not only that but we also get this FRFR kind of thing happening where um, for you know about sort of 10 years now as well we've been told that this is the route to go down to get the most um, satisfying amp like tones or the most accurate representation of what's going on i think that is maybe not yielded the best results either and so i think some people have better results kind of going down right i'm going to use a power amp with my actual guitar cab 
Um, and I think that has yielded really good results for some people. But I think one of the key things for me with the modelling stuff live is to get it to, to feel more amp-like and stuff like that. You have to kind of have it at the volume that a real amp would be before it starts to feel right. Uh, and in the same way, like a quiet amplifier on a noisy stage kind of doesn't feel or necessarily sound right and isn't that satisfying to play. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, I would say that that is the the actual part to tackle rather than you know choosing the next modeler or jumping between them because I think they're all within a ballpark in general where it's like if I pull up a deluxe reverb across most modelers it will probably be tweakable to get sounding really good certainly in studio or bedroom um, and live I think that is where it would be more difficult to get that result um, and I don't think it's necessarily down to accuracy at that point. I think it's more to do with how you get that sound up to the level of stage volume. And that's kind of the complicated part that I don't think anyone's really necessarily nailed yet. The other thing that the, the fractal stuff, like a, a real amp doesn't have aliasing, tube amplifier, um, so oversampling and you know processing power and that sort of stuff do kind of matter. The fractal stuff is the highest oversampling, like 8 and 16 times. If you think you can hear aliasing, you're more likely to be hearing it in things like Tonex and Neural Amp Modeler, um, as well as some of the cheaper units. Um, and that could be one thing that sensitive people can kind of hear going on. I'm not sure that I'm particularly sensitive to that at all, um, but that is a thing that people do say can give ear fatigue and all that sort of stuff. And I actually was speaking to my buddy Jake the other day, and uh, we were talking about in-ear mixes and stuff like that and he gigs with a Sir Bella and he said like once it goes into his in-ears and someone puts a mic in front of it oftentimes that can be really unpleasant sound uh, for him and like nowhere near as fun as actually just playing with the amp without ears in so this isn't just a model problem if you're starting to use in-ears for instance you might crop up against some of these same issues ultimately if you've got an amp like the Red Plate which works for you live, I feel like you'd probably be able to get closest to it with the fractal stuff because they have more of the dumbbell stuff. Um, if you never change any of the settings on your red plate, then potentially something like Tonex or Quad Cortex or a Kemper capture of that might be the way to go. I'm not entirely sure that that'd be satisfying for you though if you do make some changes like from gig to gig. Um, but the fractal kind of could be a good route, you know, if you've got dumbbell OES on there, HRM, uh, some two rock stuff, you've got Fook stuff, so you've got stuff which is definitely within that um, dumbbell realm, whereas a lot of the other modelers don't have like the depth of options within that, like like the fractal stuff does, and you can get in and kind of make tweaks to the, the amps under the hood, if you like, so you might find a bit more tweakability there. Um, yeah, whereas the, like the Boss GT1000 that you currently got doesn't have so much of that tweakability, and it, again doesn't have like a specific dumbbell style model either. Um, so that might be worth thinking about. But again, like I say, I think it's more about kind of stage volume, and if you have a, a tube amp turned down really low, I think that gives you some of those kind of small vibes as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.